If I had to choose one app to keep from this entire collection, it would probably be this one. Hi, I'm Mark and I'm all about psychology, tech and productivity and today we're firmly in the tech and productivity space. I'm going to be sharing a bit more about how I've set up my second brain and the five tools I use to make sure I don't forget anything. And so first question then, second brain, what am I talking about? This is a term coined by Tiago Forte who actually runs courses to help people develop this kind of system for themselves. The general idea is that our brains are not designed to hold vast amounts of information and are better utilised to solve problems. So our task in terms of being more productive and optimising our brains to do what they're designed for is to find alternative ways of holding on to all that information. In this video we're going to be covering all the tools that are really important to me that help me take notes, manage tasks, remember passwords and curate everything that's important to me to find when I need it most. So first of all, my note taking app of choice. Now, somewhere through the pandemic, I made the decision to go from a regular physical notebook and a pen for taking notes on the go to a fully digital solution. And for that, I've been using my iPad Pro with the second gen Apple Pencil, along with an app that I use pretty much every day and there are a ludicrous number of note-taking apps available on the App Store. And I've tried a few of them. Uh, special mentions go to Apple's own Notes app, which has had some really useful upgrades lately, as well as Notability, Moleskin, and Nebo. But the one that I much preferred was GoodNotes 5. So GoodNotes allows you to set up a kind of limitless number of notebooks for different parts of your life. So, for example, I have one that I use for work notes and meetings another for my coaching clients, and another general scribble pad for ideas that I have on the go that need capturing, and so on. It also allows you to pull in PDFs to be annotated and kept as a separate document, or you can embed a PDF or an image as part of an existing notebook. So this feature can be really helpful for going through a report or a document and annotating it before sending it back to some colleagues, or maybe you need to sign a contract without having to print and scan uh, using the old fashioned method. It's a great way of moving to a fully paperless setup. As with most note taking apps, you'll find really good handwriting recognition here. And you can even search your notebooks based on typed or handwritten text, which is really cool. Now there are tons of personalization features too, so you can customize the look of your notebook covers as well as the kinds of pages that appear in them. And you can add stickers or images to your notes to make them stand out. And if you use any particular visual systems in your note taking, such as bulletproof journaling, you'll find lots here. So my killer feature with this app is the ability to index your notes for quick search and recall. So one of the things I used to use in my physical Loic term notebooks was their indexing feature, but to set this up was really time consuming. But with good notes, you can bookmark any page to your index with just one button and you can give it a custom name to make sure you know what it is if you need to find it. So GoodNotes is available for Mac, iPad and iPhone and it syncs across all your devices. It's a one-off charge of just £6.99 or $7.99 which is a bargain. Now if you have an iPad and you want to switch to paperless note taking this is a must-have. So let's move on to passwords. Now, if I had to choose one app to keep from this entire collection on my phone, it would probably be my password manager. I don't mind admitting that there was a point in time where I probably would use one of three passwords on every website I used. They were easy to guess, very easily hackable, and I'd use them just randomly anytime I needed to set up a new login. And the world we live in requires us to be really vigilant about keeping unique, unbreakable passwords with combinations of letters and numbers and symbols. But the challenge is finding a safe and secure place to remember them all. Enter 1Password. So if you've never used a password manager, this is a total game changer. So in 1Password, you can save and retrieve passwords or logins for websites, credit cards, banking information, passport numbers, social security, you name it. And as the name suggests, all you need to then access that information is 1Password or some form of biometric ID like Face ID or Touch ID. And this information, once it's saved, will sync across all your devices. So once you've got your passwords and logging saved, you can download browser extensions which will automatically fill in the details you need once you've authenticated. 
The convenience that this offers is something I would definitely not want to live without. One of my favourite things about 1Password is the Watchtower feature, which continually monitors which passwords in your database might be compromised, and it will also alert you if there are any that you might have duplicated. So you can then go through and adjust them. And generating unique passwords is so easy. You just click a button and slide across to match what the website needs from you. 1Password currently costs $2.99 for an individual or $4.99 per month for a family of up to five people. Now bear in mind, if you take up the family access, you can create your own private libraries of passwords as well as ones that are shared across your family. Let's move on to tasks. I reckon I probably spent so much time testing and configuring to-do list apps over the years, I might as well have just used a pen and paper. Anyway, I'm quite a big fan of David Allen's Getting Things Done or GTD approach, which essentially mirrors Tiago Forte's principle of a second brain. Have you ever been about to fall asleep and suddenly you remember that thing that you need to do tomorrow? And some people just sit there and mentally will themselves not to forget it, which can cause a bit of stress and might stop you going to sleep. Or other people quickly grab something to capture that thought and then get it out of their head so that the brain can get on with doing what it's supposed to be doing, capturing it, and then later sorting it is one of the founding principles of GTD. So for some people that capture tool is post-it notes, like physical notebooks or things like audio memos. And for me, I much prefer a dedicated task manager that lives on my phone and I can access wherever I need it. Now, there are loads of task management apps. I've probably tried most of them over the years, including OmniFocus, TickTick, Todoist, Apple's Reminders, Microsoft To Do, by far and away, my favourite, particularly for those who are invested in Apple's ecosystem, is Things 3. Things has a beautiful, minimal, uncluttered interface which gets out of your way and allows you to then capture the important tasks as they arrive. Now you can have an inbox system to capture and then sort through as part of a more traditional GTD approach. And then you can also have recurring tasks or projects which might be made up of lots of mini tasks and all of these sync across your Apple devices. One of the principles of GTD is that whatever you're using as a capture device must be something you trust entirely. And Things 3 is something I've really grown to trust and in many ways I run my life by it. I trust it more than pretty much any other tool to capture and then be able to action the tasks that are really important to me. The only downside I would say with this app is that it is pretty costly. You have to pay a separate fee for each device that you use Things 3 on. So the iPhone app is $10, the iPad app is $20, and the Mac app is $50. So once you've paid this cost, you can have your tasks sync across multiple devices. In practice, this works really well and is incredibly efficient. And if you have multiple devices with different accounts, you don't have to pay that cost again. So for example, I have a work Mac and a home Mac with different iCloud accounts, and I'm able to use my Things account without having to pay the additional $50. Still though, it's a lot, and in my opinion, a worthwhile investment. So up until about a year ago, I was a pretty diehard Evernote user, and I would use this app to hold pretty much all the information that was important to me. And this was the tool in my second brain that I would use to curate all of the important information that I didn't absolutely need to keep a hard copy of. And whilst it wasn't perfect, I thought I would be an Evernote user for life. And then I discovered Notion. Now I've tried to describe Notion to a few people and I've always ended up kind of underselling it. So please forgive me if I've underemphasized just what a powerful tool this is. And the best way I can think of to describe Notion is it's a bit like Lego for your life admin. And just to build on that, I guess if I compare it with Evernote, what I had to do when working with Evernote is that I had to bend my approach and my workflow to fit with Evernote's model. And with Notion, I pretty much discovered that you can build it to suit however you wanna work and whatever information you wanna capture. And it can be as simple or as complex as you like. Now, I probably will do a full Notion setup video in time, but just to give you a flavor of some of the things that I use it for, keeping track of my software subscriptions, a handy record for all my utility providers and costs, a place for all my favorite recipes, filing copies of 
tax returns and bank statements, calculating running costs for my car, tracking ideas for buying gifts for people, managing the status of various home improvement projects, a list of books or articles that I've read, books or articles that I plan to read. I have a board for creative ideas for video projects and writing projects. I have a record for all the annual leave I booked at work. You get the idea. I use it for so much. And on to pricing. So for personal use within certain limits, Notion is in fact free. I do however pay for the Personal Pro subscription which is $6 a month. Now there are also various enterprising uh, models as I know many businesses use this as a collaboration tool. So those are my five favorite apps that make my life so much easier. I've added links to all of these as well as various other tools, books, etc. in the description below. And I'd be really curious to hear what kind of tools do you use for these kind of needs? What tools could you absolutely not live without to help you remember as much as possible with minimal effort? Comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of this content, please do subscribe. I'll see you next time.